Hey everyone. So, as we're all aware, the drama has been ramping up and up and up and up, and we're seeing all these bait videos and trap videos that are just meant to piss everybody off and get a reaction out of them that the baiters want to see so they can use those comments against us. Don't fall into the trap. Don't look at any of these videos. They're all bullshit. With that being said, I want to talk about something fun. I want to talk about a series that I've mentioned a couple of times on the channel before and just maybe see if I can sell a couple of people on it who haven't read it. I am talking about a five-part miniseries that did everything Marvel claims they want to do and did it so much better. Another one of those examples. And I'm referring to the Iron Patriot miniseries that came out in 2014. And forgive the noise, my water pump is going fucking crazy tonight and I have no idea what to do with it. But this series was interesting for me, interesting to me, for a couple of reasons. Namely, it was a James Rhodes-centered story, which, you know, I like War Machine. I like James Rhodes. I think he's a pretty damn cool character. And, um, but it talked a lot about his early years, you know, uh, the life he had when he was a kid, why he is the way he is, but also detailed the situation with his family, with his father and, uh, largely with his niece and, uh, you know, the relationship that's shared between, uh, Terrence and Leela Rhodes. And we only ever really got a, a good glimpse, as far as my memory is concerned, of Rhodey's family in, back in Dark Rain, where we got to meet Rhodey's mother. Um, if anybody else knows of any other instances of these characters pr uh, before this point, let me know. Um, but the whole premise of the story is, is Rhodey is striking out on his own. And he makes kind of a, it's kind of considered a controversial opinion because, you know, he was always kind of a, a team player. He was with somebody else. He was part of a team or he was, you know, doing uh, work for the military, be it the, you know, whatever branches he happened to be helping at the time. Um, and, you know, trying to become a superhero. And he picks a pretty bad name to make for himself when he tries to take over the Iron Patriot brand um, and starts using the Iron Patriot armor. And um, so this was something that a lot of people in that world were not happy about. Uh, and the first person to stick up for him was his niece, Leela. Um, and she's a pretty interesting character. She's, you know, a self-taught mechanic uh, for these armors and such, uh, you know, she had some, you know, basic instruction from Rhodey, it's implied at least, uh, as to how to get started on all this, and she's kind of carried it on, there's a pretty amusing series of jokes where, um, Rhodey keeps wondering if she's gonna turn his armor into a slave to clean her room for her, um, but it's, it's nice to see the family side of Rhodey, and to see the human elements of him, and that's largely the focus of this story is the, uh, you know, the family element to this character who we never really saw in that environment before. Uh, the, the art in this book is at times unforgivable <laughs> to say the least. And, um, you know, at other times it's, it's good, it's adequate, but it, it never really exceeds adequate it never wows you at any particular point it's you know it is what it is but it's not bad enough that you can't appreciate the story and what's going on you know as far as the characterization that goes on in this it focuses a lot on the flaws of the characters and why these characters you know have this friction between them mainly uh Rhodey and his father terrence um Terrence was, it's, they kind of set him up as that character who, you know, really wanted his son to succeed, really wanted his son to be somebody great, and is, you know, a little overbearing about it at times. But it's, it's never like there's, you know, a, a conflict between the two that reaches a boiling point. It's always, you know, uh, largely just tense debate really, would be the best way to put it. 
You know, so you ultimately end up seeing these three characters who make a lot of mistakes as this as this little mini series goes on. You know, trying to stop this new villain who doesn't even have a name um, from doing something that's honestly not really that bad. I mean, all the villain really wants to do is kill a corrupt politician who's responsible for the mur you know, the the deaths of you know a they never give a number, at least I don't remember a number, of um, quite a lot of soldiers and, you know, innocent people. It's about rooting out corruption in, um, you know, this particular branch of government. Now, that might sound like something that we would be seeing out of the SJW propaganda era of Marvel, but it's, it's never overly heavy-handed. It's never a, well, this guy's a a Republican, so he's bad. They don't even name what the, the 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 political party that the individual is associated with. Uh, they they just handle it because this is the story they wanted to tell, and that's all it is. Um, which is so weird to hear about Marvel. I know them not pushing an agenda in a book about you know a politician ultimately. You know, and I don't want to give any spoilers about the story, but you know it is one of those. It seems like bittersweet endings, but it, it ends on a really high, hopeful note. Um, you know, the, so the, that's something we don't really see a lot. You know, lately it's been a lot of depressing endings or overly happy return to status quo at last second endings. But this one brings about a real change that unfortunately wasn't reflected a lot in Marvel in the, you know, following years. Um, they kind of just completely forgot the story existed after the fact, which is a shame because I, I really do love the character Leela Rhodes. She makes a lot of mistakes. She's overly naive and the, that gets her into problems. But she also you know, doesn't really know what she's doing with any of this stuff. Clearly, she's she's 15. She's never had to deal with supervillains or anything. And ultimately, she doesn't ever end up, like, you know, putting on the suit and saving the day or whatever. She ends up basically walking into a Starbucks, punching some dude in the mouth, stealing his computer, and just, you know, hacking a couple of things to find out, uh, to help Rhodey. Um, and it's... The, it's pretty hilarious if you get to it and you read it. It's <laughs> it's pretty weird how they handle it, honestly. And, you know, I've gone on record many times by saying that Leela's the character that we should have been seeing instead of Riri Williams. It It is the same damn character in the sense of the... In, in the case of the census data. It is a young black girl who is kind of orphaned because she lives with her grandparents her parents uh it's alluded to the fact that her parents died from sickness it, it's never really you know there's no message intended with the death of her parents unlike riri um and you know she's a character who has real problems she's a character who has actually worked towards you know uh, being as intelligent as she is she's a character who is you know, not saving the day, uh, the instant they get their hands on whatever the hell they need. Uh, the only reason she succeeds in the way she does is because she plays with the team. Unlike Riri, who is Miss Lone Wolf, who can't ever really do anything right and acts like a complete other madman. But, you know, we've harped on that enough. You never want to sound like a broken record. At least, in my book, I never want to sound like a broken record. I try to avoid it when I can. But yeah, definitely check this one out. Uh, it's only five issues long. You can... I had a little bit of difficulty finding it in an actual comic book store, but uh, my store ended up ordering the copies for me a while, uh, a while back. Um, the, the Again, the art isn't that great. It's adequate. It's a... It's an average. It's a C, a perfect middle ground C, uh, as far as you know. If I have to give it a grade, the characterization is a B plus. The story is a solid B. It's 
not the best book by any stretch of the definition, but it is still a damn good read. The villain is interesting. Um, you know, his motives are believable, relatable. Every character, you can look at them and see part of your own life in them. And that's the... That's when you know you've got a good character, is when you can look at them regardless of who you are, regardless of your walk of life, and go, you know, that kind of reminds me of this thing from my own life. But if you've read this, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. If you haven't read it, let me know if you're interested. Um, let me know of any other stories that uh, really nailed what Marvel claims they want to do, uh, and does it a lot better than they have when they're actually trying to do it. Uh, and as always, don't forget to blah, 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 like, share, subscribe, blah, blah, bell for notifications, blah, blah. And until the next time, guys, have fun.